property um, is one of the many that he got in Poblado. In Poblado, he got approximately 90 properties. 90? Yeah. I mean, a uh, between apartment houses, but also a restaurant, hotel, and discotheques, and many other things to make money, right? Again, nothing is there. Most of just one, two things here and there, and that's it. The second stop that we are going to visit is the jail that he built for himself. Did you know that? Yes. The prison? We are going to be in the prison. Well, it wasn't a prison, by the way. It was a by that, right? I will explain about it later. The number three is a soccer stadium that we are going to visit. I will explain later. And finally, the, the cemetery where Pablo's poor body is there. In the tour, if you had any questions, let me know. I will try to help you out with this. I will show you many pictures of the, of the Pablo Flor family or um, the drug dealer, the members of the, of the Medellin Campbell, and many other things. Don't be shy to ask me questions. I will try to help you out with this. Everything clear? Yes. Uh, the first thing that you have to know is that Pablo wasn't born in Medellin City. He was born in another city, which is Envigado. Envigado today is together with Medellin before separate. Because we have 10 cities together. Medellin had a population of four and a half million people. So, he was born there, but he was raised and grew up in Rio Negro. Rio Negro is a small town that is behind the airport, where you landed. Did you pass a long tunnel to come from the airport? Yeah. That tunnel is three years old. It means that it was taking more time to get there. Eventually, Pablo had to move from there to here, because this is a bigger city. Clear? Before becoming a drug dealer, Escobar was making money differently, but doing illegal things like stealing people, breaking in houses, pickpocketing people, or stores and more. Why? Because he was poor. It depends on what you consider poor. Because he had a roof over his head and put on the table, but didn't have nice things for himself. What kind of things? Like clothes, bicycles, things like that. He was a teenager. He was 12, 13, 14 years old, but he was doing these things. Together with him, there is another person that is pretty important to name. It's pretty possible that you have seen this guy before because his name in TV shows, books, videos and more. This is Gustavo Gaviria. Gustavo Gaviria was discussed from the mother's side. Gustavo Gaviria, um, keep in mind that Latin Americans have two last names. One from the mother and the second from the father. Sorry, the first from the father and the second from the mother. Paulo was named Paulo Escobar Gaviria and he was Gustavo Gaviria, clear, right? They were related and they were doing these activities that I was telling you, pickpocketing people, robbing a store, breaking in houses, doing these things. And eventually they came here. They came to Medellin City to work for the most important criminal in Medellin City, which was Alfredo Gutierrez nicknamed Cockroach. Keep in mind that um, drug dealers of this kind of people had nicknames. Any of you, do you know the Pablo Escobar nickname? Do you, do you know how he used to be called? Say it. El Patron. Very good, El Patron. Do you know the meaning of El Patron in English? Neither. Huh? The boss. leader. Neither. In English. How else? It's, it's, it's more like the boss. Today we don't say Patron to your boss. In Spanish we say Jefe. Jefe, Patron, boss. Weird, right? But he was a nickname Patron when he was 16, trying to work for Cockroach here in Medellin City. He was later, like 10 years later, for Tom to learn her, when he was 27, when he was a dangerous guy, a drug dealer, doing these things. Before he was just Paulito, that's it, for Tom, right? He was 16, came here to work for Cockroach. Cockroach was nicknamed that way because he survived two attacks into his body like a cockroach, right? And he was a smuggler. Keep in mind that being a drug dealer wasn't common yet before. There was other activities to make money. The people who made it popular to be a drug dealer is the main in cartel, not before. So before, uh, Cockroach was bringing electronic devices from Ecuador and Peru. Devices like microwaves, TV, AC, radio, this kind of thing. And they didn't pay taxes or steal them from those countries. <coughs> That's why the prices of these devices were better than the competitor in Colombia. Clear? So basically, Pablo became a bodyguard. He learned how to use a gun and protect someone else in the cockroach organization. And let's say that this is the first serious job of Pablo Escobar when he was 16. Keep in mind that they, they start to be doing tours. tours. They, start, they start to do criminal things pretty young. In this case, 16, 15, 17. That's why 
they died though, John too. At 23, 24 or something like that. Clear, right? You know, his mother, these two people and the police that they were killed by the Medellin cartel somehow. I don't know if you know, more or less two and three thousand police were killed by the Medellin cartel. Especially because they wanted to send a message to them. Don't follow us or we kill you. The problem about being a police back then is that um, the Medellin cartel was paying a lot of money for every police the young kids were killing. They were paying more or less between one and five thousand dollars. American dollars. Huh. Per party, yeah. And one thousand dollars was enough to buy a house here. Not in this location because this is so loud. This is expensive. But we had humble area here in, in the U city where the houses used to be one thousand dollars. Have you been so far in the Comuna 13? The Graffiti mm -hmm. Tour? Yep. That is a beautiful place that you can visit here. It's another tour. The shape of the neighborhood there is not in good condition even today. But today it's beautiful. Then it was difficult. Those houses were between seven hundred and a thousand dollars, right? So basically because of that, um the young kids were getting too much money. And they were becoming loyal to Paulo because of the money that they were receiving. Especially because they were not killing one, two, one police, they were killing two or three. That's why you can see an exposure that is related to the police and molecular speaking on the left side. You have to understand that what used to live here, there was a property here. But then the government got the papers of the place and demolished the place to create the memorial park that you can see. Let me show you a picture of the place that it used to be here. It was a, 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 a building. Before having a building wasn't a thing. He was living in the penthouse with his wife, son and daughter. The only, uh, they were only living there and the rest of the floor were being used for the classic car parking lot or whatever he considered important. He used to have two expensive cars here. One of them belonged to Al Capone and the second belonged to Pony and Clyde. He paid five million dollars for each one and then eventually these cars and the property was destroyed. Why? Because the Cali cartel sent a car with a bomb inside in order to kill him. Why? Because the Cali cartel was jealous of the monopoly of the, Cali, uh, of the Medellin cartel. Medellin cartel used to possess 80% of the marketplace of cocaine in the planet in the best moments. Cali cartel, one, two, three, or something like that. That's why you can see a, a picture here of the same place when it was bombed by the Cali cartel in 1988. The only person who suffered from this was his daughter. His daughter lost the audition from one year. His squad wasn't here, he was doing something else outside. Then he got a phone call when they told him, Pablo, your daughter is in the hospital. And then that's when he realized that she suffered from this. That is why there was a conflict between Cali and Medellin Cartel. Cali wanted to have power of Pablo and Medellin Cartel wanted to take revenge. And people in the middle were being killed because they were involved in this situation. Everything clear? Please follow me, let me show you more. Let's get inside. Okay, listen. Something I didn't tell you the moment that the place was demolished and created this thing. It happened in December 2019. It's kind of blurry because it has been raining this day. Here you can see that this is in honor of the people that somehow were killed by the Medellin cartel. It said the following in Spanish. It's undeniable the pain with every dead person that died those days. We remind them when they are not here anymore in their memory display. But also we had important people on the left side that they were um, helping the, the government to, to destroy the political organization. They are especially politicians, lawyers and reporters. I'm gonna show you a picture of them and I have to tell you why they were killed by the Medellin cartel. Please, let me show you the first one. The first one, it is Carlos Maurojo. Carlos was a procurator here in Colombia. A procurator is a high position in the politics. I don't know if you know, but Escobar was afraid to be sent to the United States.
the bullets and the innocent people that they were killed. This is the estimation of killing, right? According to the government. The estimation of killing according to the government is 49,000 people. And there are, right now, 49,000 holes there. But the estimation should be higher than that, more or less between 60 and 70,000 people, in my opinion. We are not sure. A lot of people disappear, right? Keep in mind that this is not everything that found the square fault or the maybe the fault. You have to understand that there was more than one cartel. There are a lot of cartels in Medellin, in Colombia. Medellin cartel is one, Cali cartel is another one, Los Pepes is another one. Los Pepes cartel was a combination between Cali and Medellin cartel. They make a new group in order to... Todo bien, gracias. I told you that anything that happened before 1984, he can do whatever he wants, right? Because he hasn't done any mistake yet. But you can see that the things became more complicated since then because there are thousands of, of bombs that you can see. Clear? Mm. That is one. The next one is also important in 1985, which is the Justice Palace. The Justice Palace was taken by the, by the guerrilla, hired by Pablo Escobar. The situation is that inside the Justice Palace there was some papers that incriminate Pablo Escobar indirectly speaking. Escobar sent the guerrilla, the guerrilla in order to destroy the papers. And that is... Dime. The Justice Palace was completely destroyed with most of the people inside and also the papers. So basically, if you ever go to Bogota City, to the main square in, in, in Timon Bolivar Square, you're going to see that the Justice Palace is not there because the one I'm saying was destroyed in 1985. Here you can see another thing that is important to name that it happened on January 13, 1988. This is the edificio of Monaco. Monaco building is this place that we are visiting right now. Do you remember who put the bomb here that I told you before? There. Very good, Cali Cartel. And do you remember who put the, uh, who suffered from this? The only person who suffered? His daughter. Yeah, what happened with her? She become dead. That's why there was a conflict between Cali and Medellin Cartel. She died? No, she's okay, but she got death. Yeah. Come on, let me show you more. How many children did he have? Officially speaking, two. <laughs> it's a nice answer, I know, but yeah. that is a right answer. Listen, the most difficult year is 1989, because you can see that all the way from here to the end, there are bombs, more or less 84 bombs. And you can see that there are one, uh, some days that they put in more than one. Bomba is bomb, yeah? Yeah. You can see that in, on January 11, they put three of them on the same place. Pharmacy Drogas La Rebaja. And you can see another two here that is to the same one. Pharmacy Drogas La Rebaja three days later. Five in total in just five days. The situation in the Drogas La Rebaja was belonging to the Cali Cartel. The Cali Cartel were using these places like a ghost company to land their money. Because um, they hurt his daughter here in the Monaco building. They had to be destroyed. And some people died inside there. Innocent people. Here. Let me show you more. You can see that they put a bomb anywhere you can think. They put a bomb in discotheques, bar, police station, buses, airplanes. They put a bomb in Catholic church, Mormon churches, Jewish churches. They put a bomb in banks, in high school, universities, stadium, theater, etc., etc., etc. Here, you can see the most difficult day on the most difficult year. On the same day, August 27, 1989. They put it in total eight bombs in different locations in Medellin City. You can see all of them in banks. The situation is that both Banco. banks were sharing information about Medellin cartel, cartel transactions, the money that the Medellin cartel were using. Because of that, they have to be destroyed. Again, innocent people die there. Clear? Let me show you more. This is 
then we generate a back of commercial from the second here. The Avianca airplane. The situation is someone important was going to use the airplane. And that someone is this guy. This is Cesar Gaviria. Cesar Gaviria was going to be the next president of Colombia. Remember Luis Carlos Galán was dungeon by the guerrilla? After he died, the next president of Colombia was going to be this person. Thanks to his legacy, the legacy of Galán, he became the president of Colombia. original picture of the same place that we are going to visit. This is the before and the after of the same place. Let me explain you the picture because this picture was taken by his friend or himself. You can see that he got living rooms with kitchen. It means that he got chefs serving food for him. You can see that he got TVs, things to listen music, big rooms with big beds, in any place that is worth spend more than a month, he was going to have money there, and you can see money here, right? You can see an office with the booking account of the money that he was controlling. His son and daughter came here to visit him once a week, every two days. You can see that he got like a hum uh, amazing common area to, to play dominoes, to play pool tables and more. He was making party here with beers and more. You can see that he became pretty fat because he was eating a lot. His wife came here. This is Victoria now Escobar, nicknamed Tata. Tata came here with Paul, with his son and daughter to visit Pablo every week. You can see Popeye here, the guy that I showed you in the first stop. You also can see Pablo Escobar, the bodyguard of Pablo Escobar and the girlfriend of the bodyguard of Pablo Escobar. You can see that there was a, it was like a square, the structure. He was staying the second floor. So the second floor, all the way from the blue wall to the left side, it was the, the jail. Today is the nursing home. It changed the place because now it's a nursing home. Clear, right? He wasn't alone. He was together with another nine prisoners. And one of them was his brother. You can see that the property was having watchtowers around with fences and electric shock. Everything fake. You can see that it was looking like a jail in this picture front of side, but inside was amazing, you can see, clear? You can see that he got a, a, a birthday party with his daughter, and the most iconic picture of Pablo behind bars. This picture was faked, because actually, the US wanted to see a picture of Pablo behind, inside the, the, the jail. Pablo eventually hired a photographer, and he came here. The photographer took the picture and brought the picture behind. That is not a cell because there was no cell here. It was actually a door. It was standing behind and took the picture. Can you see a metal thing on the left side of there? That it was the way to close the door with a locker. And it wasn't closed, you can see, it's open. They sent the picture this way with a mistake and many other mistakes. And that is why he got the phone call and he left the place after a year. You can see that the place changed a lot. Now it's a little more for all people. Since 2004,
listen guys, something that I have to show you. Remember the picture that I was showing you at the beginning? That they were playing the dominoes, pool tables or something mm -hmm. like that? They were playing here. This is the location. You have to understand that Colombia is the second most Catholic country in Latin America, right? And because of that, the nursing home wanted to make a church here. Something that never is finished, because you can see that it's inside, it's not in good condition. They stopped the construction, and the structure changed since then. Can you see the crosses on it? I mean, the, on the architecture? That's newer. And also the mosaic on the right left side. It means that it, rec it was reconstructed. But here, it was celebrated the parties with girls and more. Clear? Let me show you more. For example, the next one wasn't here before. It was empty. Today, it's being used for the nursing home to say things like table, crystal flies, whatever. <coughs> and here, let me introduce you, Medellin City. No. Please come on down, let me show you this thing. Let's go. Listen, one of the reasons he selected the place that we are visiting up here is because it had a good viewpoint of the city. Because if there was any enemy coming from far in a helicopter, they were ready to shoot at them if the, if the sky was clear like this, or even clearer than this, more clear. But another reason why he selected this place is because this forest, this area, is called the Foggy Forest. For for coverage, he lived in this neighborhood for two years. Because the people from here were welcoming him somehow, he wanted to give something in return in the case that he became rich. And that's something is this thing that you're seeing today. This place has never been destroyed because sport is important for kids. And there are matches every day during the afternoon between high schoolers, university guys, and semi pro Right? That is why he had never been destroyed. This is not the only field he gave away. He gave away in total 70 fields of any kind. I mean, swimming pools, soccer fields like this, green fields, uh, concrete fields, also uh, basketball court, volleyball court, and more. This is one of them. And the other 69 is located in another location in but this is the biggest one. But before it was considered a stadium in 1982, in the time that football wasn't considered as popular as today. You, you understand? I mean, that's why it's very small. And also, Square made this place for um, a part of political purposes because he wanted to make a soccer team to play for him. Do you know that? He made a soccer team. And the soccer team still play in the first division in Colombia. But they're not playing here anymore. They're playing a proper stadium somewhere else. They're called Envigado Football Club from the city of Envigado. And Envigado is this place where Pablo Escobar was born. Remember? Envigado Football Team? Yeah. Envigado is not the best, but not the worst in the, in the Colombian football. It's somewhere in the middle. We have 18 teams, something like that, 17. And they are like nine positions, 10 every time. Mm. Clear? So, Escobar made this thing not because of showing that he was a Robin Hood, but because he wanted to make more money and becoming a congressman to change his tradition law. He just wanted to look like a good guy. He wasn't a good guy. You understand me? The place wasn't the same all the time. Can you see the ceiling in front and the one above us that didn't exist before? The fences around didn't exist either. It was an open stadium. And finally, the blue tracks to run, the government put it there five years ago. And before it wasn't fake grass, it was actually real grass. But maintaining <coughs> real grass is more expensive than stores. That's why they changed it like five, like 10 years ago. And here you can see a picture of Pablo Escobar when he opened the place for the first time, just to show that he was a nice guy bringing something to the people. He went, he went to the middle field. Sorry? His brother was a football player. I know some him. 
and here you can see the picture. He went to the middle field and also uh, pushed the ball like that. Just to show that he was a nice guy. Not only here, in many other locations in Magic City. Everything has been understood. If you want to take pictures, you can. And listen, if you need to go to the bathroom, there is one that is behind here. You can go, it's free. And if you want, need to buy something, you can do it. Any questions? I'm gonna use the bathroom, let me wait. Wait for me. show you because she is buried with her husband, the guy that she killed. Because when she was in jail, she changed her will and she said that she wanted to be buried with her favorite husband. So basically she's buried with the guy that she killed. Who is this? The Black Widow. Oh, yeah. mm. So be careful. You know. <laughs> anyway, let me show you more uh, the police court right. Take your picture. It's right there with the top many people. Listen, I will show you the public court grave is there, but it has to work right now, so let me explain this thing first. Normally, I finish here, but it doesn't matter. Here we can see Gustavo Galeria, his cousin, the best friend of Pablo, remember? He was killed by the police because they found his location in 1990. Then you can see Gustavo Gaviria Jr., his son. His son died uh, on the same day as the court, December 2nd, 1993. Gustavo Jr. died because he was under torture by the police. The police didn't. Um, the police wanted to know the squad location because he said the information about Pablo. Eventually, he was killed by the Medellin cartel the same day during the night. Right? Yes. He got another son, Jose Luis. Jose Luis didn't do anything related to the drug trafficking, but was pretty loved in the family. And lastly, Alexandra. Alexandra didn't do anything related to this thing because she. Well, she was a girl. It was a man work, right? And eventually she died two, two years ago because of cancer. They are together, but they are separate of the Pablo Square race. Why? Because that was designed by his sister. Pablo didn't think he was gonna die. So she just didn't consider Gustavo as like someone to be together with. Clear? Now, let me show you the Pablo Square race. Okay, listen guys, here we can see the Polo Square race. Come on here. You can see that he was born in December 1st, 1949 and died in December 2nd, 1993. 
He was 44 years old in one day. He died after his birthday. He stood there with other people. The first one is his brother, who is Fernando Escobar. His brother died in December 25, 1977, because he got a car accident. This car accident basically, um, he was running too fast in the car, lost the control of the car because he was drunk. And basically he went downhill, downhill and died. The next one is his nanny, Teresa. Teresa um, was, you know, helping the, the mother of Paolo to take care of the kids. And that's it, that's why she's here. Then you can see Ermilda. Ermilda is his mother. His mother died in 2006, you can see. And after that you can have Ines Ophelia. Ines was the sister of Ermilda. She was also taking care of the kids together with Teresa. And she was the person who lived more compared to the others. A hundred years, almost. Then after that you have Gloria Angelica. Gloria Angelica was a nurse in the Palo Square family. And she was the last person they added here in 2018. Then after that we can see Alvaro de Jesus. Alvaro de Jesus died the same day as the war, December 2nd, 1993, you can see. This is the bodyguard that he was together with Pablo in, the, in this house. He was nicknamed Limon, Lemon. And Lemon was killed by the police first, and then two minutes later, Pablo Escobar, according to the police report. Then you can see Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel was his uncle from the father's side. He didn't do anything related to the drug trafficking, but was very lost in the family. And lastly, but not least important, his father. His father was not present in the public square childhood because he was a cowboy or something like that, like a farmer. Because not having a father figure, it's pretty possible that Escobar became a psychopath or maybe the education from his mother. But that's my opinion, we will never know. Now the flowers, can you see the flowers? The flower is something that is being brought by someone that works for the public square family here and keep clean this place. The flower is being brought especially from the church that you can see behind me, the Catholic church, because they like to honor the people around, not only here, because there are funerals every day. Instead of throwing the flowers to the garbage, they use it for the second time, not only here, anyway. Do you understand me everything, guys? Yes. Guys, this is the entire tour. This is everything I needed to show you. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new. It was my pleasure to be a tour, guys. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, Thank you. you.